Good morning. Hello, everyone. This is Jiri Butnaro. Thank you for attending our webinar today. Joining us today are Shimon Hochbaum, Cyclus product manager, who will be presenting our brand new multi-hall, just recently launched. He will be reviewing all the unique specs, pricing, and our uh, pre-order campaign. And also on the line, we also have uh, Tony Ramos, who is a manufacturer's representative at Ocom Sales, who will be reviewing the College of DuPage project. Just before I hand it over to Tony, I want to remind you that if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to contact us. I will be gathering all the questions and I'll address them to Shimon and Tony if there is anything you want them to revisit or elaborate on during the webinar or the Q&A session at the end. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Tony. Yes, sure. Please go ahead. You can uh, unmute him for some reason. So please go ahead. Okay, hi guys, this is Alex Norden, um, I know most of you know me. Um, so I actually worked on this project uh, with, with Tony Ramos from uh, Ocom Sales. Um, we started off uh, this, this project about a, a year ago and actually Tony introduced uh, this project to, to Ciclo. I know he'd been working on this project for at least two or three years and this is the College of DuPage project. Uh, Tony was working on it with, uh, with a consultant um, uh, company called uh, Elert and um, they worked on a few different designs and uh, they could really find a, a good wireless solution that they were happy with. Uh, so, uh, so Tony introduced them to, uh, to Ciclu uh, and our technology, um, we, we spent a lot of time working with, with the consultant Elert on, the, on this project, uh, on the requirements, etc. Uh, uh, do you want to go to the next slide, uh, Shiri? Sure. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, so we, we worked quite heavily with the the, the consultants on this project, put a design together. And the the, uh, the the final design uh, consisted of about uh, 56 Cyclo uh, EH600 TX links. That's a 60 gigahertz radio with a 2 gig capacity uh, with uh, Archon Vision uh, Omni uh, surround video cameras, and, and the the, uh, the VMS was exactly already had an exact VMS uh, in place there, which they were going to expand. Um, so we put a lot of uh, designs together using Google Earth. So uh, Tim Murphy, our pre-sales manager, worked heavily with a consultant on that. We did multiple iterations before it actually went out to bid. And a uh, company called Activity, uh, well, they won the wireless piece. They're actually subcontracted for another company uh, who were actually doing the, the, uh, the, who were the prime. And a company called Activity, they, uh, they actually did the, uh, the, the wireless portion. Um, and it's actually almost, almost completed. You want to go to the next slide? Next slide, Shuri. Okay, so the, the primary purpose for this uh, this project was uh, video surveillance over the parking lots uh, for security safety of the, the staff, students, and visitors. Uh, but they, they do see a uh, uh, an opportunity as well of adding uh, Wi-Fi capability in their parking lots in the future, which is one reason why they wanted the additional capacity, so not just for the uh, the video but also to provide uh, Wi-Fi uh, in the future, so that might be a future you know, uh, a project. So the, the motivation uh, behind it really was uh, to provide a better security, uh, as I mentioned, for the staff, students, visitors, et cetera, 24-7, uh, um, and that's really what, what they, you know, this project is going to, uh, to provide. So I actually went out to, uh, to bid um, you know, after, after the design, Design with with Ciclu specified, and the primary reason Ciclu was chosen uh, because of the uh, the lack of interference of our technology, particularly uh, you know uh, against Wi-Fi, because there's quite a lot of Wi-Fi um, and noise in that area, because obviously it's a built-up area, uh, a lot of uh, Wi-Fi activity, uh, as well as they wanted the uh, capacity uh, both for the the video, obviously the high megapixel cameras. Uh, I think there were 12 megapixel cameras being used, if not higher. Uh, as well as the capability to, of expanding the, the system in the future, adding both additional cameras as well as uh, Wi-Fi access points. Next slide, Shiri. So this is kind of what the design looks like, which um, Tim Murphy from Ciclu put together. So he actually created multiple rings in the parking lot. Um, 
Uh, some with redundancy as well. In case one uh, link fails, over, we can actually automatically fail over to another link. Um, and the different colors, just notating the different rings, if you like, uh, to kind of make it easy from a uh, uh, viewing point of view. Um, so the consultant basically told us where the cameras were located. Uh, and we had the job of uh, figuring out the best way of connecting them uh, wirelessly. So looking both at the uh, the distances uh, as well as the uh, the line of sight, um, and also where they're going to be connected to uh, uh, to the network in the uh, actual buildings. Uh, so you can see here, it was pretty complex design. Uh, we, we you know we put a lot of work into this. Uh, next slide. Next, actually, it's the Alex, unless you have anything else to add before we move over to Alex, before we move over to Simon, sorry. No, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Shiri. Right. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate that. So uh, with that, let's hand it over to Shimon uh, to start our uh, diving into a multi-hole review. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Shimon Hochbaum, and um, I will be talking about our new multi-hole product uh, for the next few minutes. We are talking about a product which uh, has been in the field already for the last uh, few months. We've been going through an extensive uh, period of uh, beta trial uh, together with system integrators, uh, wireless ISPs, uh, tier one providers uh, to be sure that uh, we have a, a robust product uh, going into a general availability. Uh, some of the results that uh, have been achieved were already tweeted by one of uh, our customers, Monkey Brains in uh, California. And uh, you could see that within uh, five minutes, uh, two posts, with the one before and the one after, uh, 600 megabit uh, connected in five minutes uh, of uh, little work, uh, just a small drill, uh, and then the speed test uh, as a proof of uh, the link availability and performance. So we were quite uh, impressed because uh, uh, these uh, monkey brains did all this with uh, no training at all. They've been a long customer of Cyclu with our Etherhole product, uh, and they took on the multi hole without no training at all, uh, got their trial units, uh, went out on the roof, five minutes later, somebody was connected with the performance that you can see here. So one of the markets which we are targeting with multi-hole is definitely video surveillance. And the main reason is that uh, multi-hole uh, working in the 60 gigahertz range uh, will uh, definitely allow streaming the real picture. Uh, it is completely immune to interference, uh, which will also ensure network survivability. Even in times of disaster, uh, hackers will have a very hard time uh, to get onto this network uh, because there is no equipment uh, for that. And at the end of the day, uh, the organizations who will rely on uh, multi-hole uh, for their video surveillance applications uh, will are pretty much ensure of an always-on connectivity. But just so that uh, we are all clear here, uh, multi-hole is not working uh, standalone. It is definitely another addition to a portfolio of street level uh, rooftop solutions and we will leverage uh, the best of uh, any of the three depending on the deployment uh, to be realized. Uh, we can see here on this slide how actually all of the tools uh, that we have uh, at our disposal, dispos uh, available, sorry, uh, can be deployed to realize uh, one uh, network. You can see the multi-hole doing uh, the short point-to-multi-point uh, -point -point access to cameras and emergency call boxes in this example, and then uh, the ether hall links for longer reaches and maybe higher capacity uh, to backhaul the point to multi point multi hall uh, to the IT operations in this campus. 
So now that we see where multi-hole can fit in a complete solution, let's focus a little more on the type of architectures that we can deploy with multi-hole. As we see here on this slide, the basic topology is a BU which is going to be located at the vantage point, if you want, in the network on one high building or some, any kind of tall structure where it has good visibility of a number of uh, cameras or uh, other uh, units to be uh, backhauled to the network, and then a number of terminal units uh, which uh, are uh, covered in the sector of the base unit. Uh, the base unit itself will generally be connected to the core network of the organization. Generally speaking, we can connect up to eight terminal units to one of the base units, and we'll talk a little bit later about uh, the capacity. Another type of uh, configuration, if you want, which can be realized with uh, multi-hall in case the core network connectivity is not easily realized at the location of the base unit, which is situated where it has good visibility, uh, would be to utilize one of the terminal units actually to back all the traffic to where the connection to the core network is easily realized. Uh, another option, of course, would be to take one of our point-to-point uh, -point V-band or E-band links, uh, as we saw on the larger topology slides, and back all the uh, BU to the core network utilizing one of our point-to-point -point links. It's all a matter of the kind of performance, distance, and availability that you would like to achieve. And yet another option in case, uh, for example, there would be more than eight units which uh, need to be uh, connected back to the core network, or maybe one would need to go around the building or farther distance than what uh, multi-hole can uh, cover, it would be just to connect a base unit to one of the terminal units with just a, an Ethernet jumper and uh, this way basically double the distance of one of the uh, of the multi-hole capabilities or go from eight to maybe 60 or more units covered in the network uh, by connecting a number by, by connecting one base unit to one of the eight terminal units in the first cluster and basically going from one to eight clusters in this way. So at the end of the day, you, what I hope you appreciate here is that uh, multi-hole is a very flexible solution, even though it is basically a point to multi-point and it can easily adopt, adapt sorry, to any of the needs to cover a campus or maybe a small portion of a city uh, and uh, do very effectively gigabit backhaul if necessary. So how does it, this all work? Uh, basically, you know, you, the millimeter wave technology that you have uh, seen so far has always been point to point with a requirement for quite precise alignments between the two point to point units. And you have seen here the illustration uh, in multi-hall, we have actually an electronic steering uh, antenna inside of any of the units and uh, when the units are started, they will start scanning for 90 degrees coverage, identify where the other side of the link is located, optimize the link in order to achieve the best possible performance, and in that way maintain these very reliable high capacity narrow beams between the two units. Even if there is more than one unit in the cluster, as we can see here, uh, an example then both the base unit and the terminal units are capable of doing this alignment, scanning for 90 degrees, and then identifying where is the other party for the link and keeping a very narrow beam from their own. This allows, uh, this allows uh, once we have these narrow beams, we can achieve the fantastic multi-gigabit capacity, but also maintain the immunity from any interference uh, in the area, even from another uh, multi-hole cluster, which would be not too far in the campus. As I said earlier, uh, one base unit can connect to up to eight terminal units. 
looking at a few of the numbers, uh, the base unit and the terminal units have uh, the same capability. Uh, they can scan for 90 degrees on the azimut, plus minus uh, 45 degrees from the center point. If the range is actually shorter, and uh, we'll talk about that in a few so in a few minutes, uh, we can actually uh, achieve a little higher uh, coverage, uh, up to 120 degrees or plus minus 60 degrees from the center point at short distances. Uh, once the beams are aligned, the horizontal beam width is 5 degrees and the vertical beam width is 20 degrees. In terms of capacity, the base unit ships out of factory with a base capacity of 500 megabit and can be upgraded with a software license to uh, 1 gig or 1.8 gigabit. The terminal units, on the other hand, uh, start with a base capacity of 100 megabit and can be upgraded uh, with a software license to 1 gigabit. Uh, for the two type of units, it's just one step, so there is very little confusion. Uh, the most basic networks can start with the base capacity and if you need a little more, you don't need to think too much about what you need, it's just one license to purchase and you get basically all the capacity that can be realized by any of the two units. In terms of uh, power to the units, uh, if PoE out is not required, a base unit or a terminal unit would need only 10 watt. If PoE out is uh, necessary at the base unit or at the terminal unit, uh, then it's uh, 50 watt. Uh, it, in both cases, uh, we ship together with the base or the terminal unit, the PoE, which can deliver all of the power required for the unit. So you don't need to think too much about this aspect of the project as well. A little more details about the performance. Uh, you are all used, for example, to you know, claims in the wireless, in the Wi-Fi world about 54 meg and maybe 500 meg or 1 gig or anything alike. Uh, when people talk about these speeds, they actually talk about the physical layer, uh, raw data rate if you want, between uh, the Wi-Fi access point and your computer or uh, another Wi-Fi uh, unit. Uh, in terms of being able to actually use this capacity, we all know that it is uh, rarely possible. In the multi-hall, our physical layer rate can go all the way up to 2.3 gigabit because of the controls and uh, the overhead of the point-to-multipoint protocol, what can actually be delivered and used effectively between a base unit and a terminal unit is 1.8 gigabit on a sector and each which allows comfortably a terminal unit to actually achieve a capacity of 1 gigabit. Now, to be clear, when we talk about capacity, uh, we are a completely dynamic. It means that uh, even the 1.8 gigabit of capacity can be allocated at any one point in time as the applications will demand it between the different terminal units. And per each terminal unit, we can also do dynamic allocation uh, between the upstream and downstream. Uh, if you remember from the previous discussions uh, about ether hall, uh, when we have to set the allocation between up and downstream to either 50-50 or 75-25, and it will remain so until somebody would decide to change it, here in the world of multi-hall, the allocation of the bandwidth is completely dynamic and responsive to the demands of the application. A classic example would be in the case of uh, somebody with an office doing a lot of video processing. They can start the morning downloading a file of a number of you know, large gigabyte file of video and processing locally. And a few minutes later when they are done, they just push the send button on the file to send it to the next user of that file. And they will get again access to one gigabit, but this time in the upstream direction completely dynamic, uh, responsive to the needs of the applications. 
Uh, in case I did not say it, uh, obviously multi-hole works in the 60 gigahertz uh, spectrum, which means that it is unlicensed. Uh, obviously the equipment is registered with the FCC and can be operated anywhere in uh, the US. Uh, but uh, as an integrator, as a service provider, as a organization, there is no need to register unlike some of the ether hall uh, products that we have. In terms of capacity, uh, the full rate of the capacity, so 1.8 gigabit per sector or 1 gig per terminal unit, is achieved at uh, the reach of 200 meters today, about 900 feet. Uh, in case of maybe video surveillance where you might not need uh, the full gigabit and you would be uh, happy with maybe a hundred meg or less, uh, then we can extend uh, the coverage all the way to 300 meters uh, from the base unit to the terminal unit. Here is again uh, how the uh, terminal units or base unit look like, they both look the same. Uh, you can see a nice and shiny radome uh, which hides uh, the antenna and the electronics. On uh, one side of the unit we have a label uh, with uh, model and part numbers, etc. Uh, on uh, the other side of the unit we have, we have something which is a little more interesting. We have uh, five recessed LEDs, one of them for power, which will basically go green as soon as the unit has started up, initialized the software and confirm that it's all in good working order, uh, half a minute I would say. And uh, then an RF LED, which is uh, the next one most interesting, as soon as a terminal unit has uh, recognized the base unit and completed the authentication, uh, then the RF LED will go green to confirm that basically the alignment, authentication, all that is done. It generally will take a few seconds, so installation is very simple. Orientate the unit uh, toward the, the base unit, connect the ground, the power, wait half a minute for the software to initialize, a few more seconds for the alignment and authentication to complete. The RF LED will confirm all this and basically you are good to go. You can move on to the next unit and uh, uh, basically provide the service to another camera or call box or whatever it is. Uh, the, in terms of uh, installation, uh, I think we have a better slide uh, copy up so. Uh, the port layouts on the units are very simple. Uh, the base unit comes with uh, three ports. Two are gigabit Ethernet, one for power in, one for power out if necessary. Uh, and then there is a third port which is an SFP. Uh, some uh, organizations do not really like uh, copper to come from the roof all the way down to the IT room. They prefer to see fiber and uh, we have that uh, available on the third port basically. One need just to uh, set uh, the SFP uh, to, be, to buy the, one, the correct one, either single mode or multi-mode depending on the type of fiber and the distance. And then the SFP will start by default at one gig. If more than one gig of capacity is required, it can be software configured to run at 2.5 gig, thereby delivering all of the capacity that is uh, available in the sector. In case there are more than two base units on that uh, pole, then the first bet base unit can connect via Ethernet to the second one and also provide power from there to the second one. So both from a networking and from power, DESI chain is possible actually for up to three base units on a single pole. Again, we try to make all this as simple to plan and deploy as possible. On the right side of the slide we have the terminal units, just two models. The first one has a single port, uh, one gig uh, for power uh, or connection to a camera or whatever it is. The next model has uh, three ports. The first port is gigabit Ethernet and power in. The next two ports are 
uh, gigabit Ethernet again, and PoE out capability is available on these two ports. There are no licenses, uh, not for PoE, not for networking. All of that is available. The only software license that you would ever require is related to the capacity of uh, the speed capacity if you want, uh, 500 to 1.8 or 100 to 1 gig, depending on base unit or terminal unit. In terms of uh, physical size, as you can see, the uh, units are quite uh, small, 7 inches tall, 5 inches wide, 2 inches deep, half a liter uh, of volume, uh, very unobtrusive uh, when mounted on a pole, on a wall, or anywhere it can be done. And here, in terms of uh, uh, mounting a few details, uh, the unit uh, is shipped with the mounting kit that you see here on the left in the box. So that mounting kit has basically two applications. Uh, on a pole, as you see here, with two uh, bands. The bands are also provided uh, in the package. Um, and in case one would prefer to do a wall mount, uh, then you just, uh, there are holes on the back of the mounting kit. You take the mounting kit off uh, the uh, terminal unit, drill the four holes in the wall, uh, screw in the mounting kit on the wall, put back the unit into the mounting kit, and now you have achieved a very simple uh, wall mount uh, solution as well. Uh, this, this mounting kit uh, provides a little bit of up and down adjustment at 10 degrees if needed to shoot up or down uh, to where the base or terminal units are located. In case the 10 degrees are not uh, enough and you would need more vertical adjustment, um, then we can use the same uh, small kit from the Etherhold product line. You can see here the four uh, place holders for that small mounting kit on the back. It has to be ordered separately in that case. In terms of operation modes, uh, very simple here again. Uh, out of the box, uh, basically take the base unit it, it has already a default uh, channel and security configuration. Uh, put it on uh, the location. It will start uh, looking out for terminal units. Take a terminal unit out of the box again. Uh, ground and power uh, alignment toward the base unit, and it will start looking for the base unit. And because they share out of the box the same uh, security information, they will authenticate, connect, and out of the box, uh, the cluster will go into operation very easily. Uh, in case the uh, organization prefers a little more control over what uh, goes on in this network, then you can start configuring channel, changing the security parameters. In case the security parameters are changed on the TU, on the BUs, it has to be changed on the TUs as well. From a point of the channel uh, is uh, scanned by the terminal unit, and they will always find the base unit, regardless of which channel it was set to go, as long as they share the same security credentials. If you further need to assign VLANs, etc., uh, that can be done as well. In terms of uh, Pricing and configuration, uh, here very simple, uh, we have uh, three part numbers, one for the base unit, two for the terminal units, depending on whether you need one or three ports. You can see the prices are very comfortable, uh, discounts will depend on uh, the organization and how you buy that, so I will not go into detail here. And again, there are not many additional part numbers, just one part number for the base unit or the terminal unit, depending on capacity that you might want to expand on. And the mounting kit, if elevation needs to go more than plus minus 10 degrees. 
try to keep it simple, and that's what we have uh, attempted at doing here. Okay? Um, and uh, before we move on to the Q&A session, uh, I'd like to draw everybody's attention that uh, we have actually uh, a campaign going on at this point in time. Uh, because the first batch was sold out uh, very quickly uh, during those trials, uh, we have uh, started a campaign uh, which is going to run out uh, by the end of the month, uh, where you can uh, either send us an email, marketing at cyclo.com, or uh, on it first on our website, and from there you can uh, define the, the kind of project that you are uh, working on, and uh, we will uh, capture all this information on our website, route it to the relevant uh, distributor or other type of partner which uh, can work with you on this opportunity and make sure that you receive the correct priority uh, depending on when you registered your order uh, for deliveries uh, during uh, the second production batch. Okay. So, uh, with that, we are going to turn out to our Q&A session. Uh, we have uh, received uh, a few questions through uh, the chat. Uh, I'll go and try to scan them. It will take me a few seconds to get organized. And uh, if you have other questions, uh, please send us our way. I will uh, uh, start responding in about 10 15 seconds. Thank you. Okay, so um, no, the distribution partners that we have uh, in the U.S. are uh, Wincom, Connectronics, uh, Annixter, uh, Baltic, Double Radius, uh, etc. We are going to add more uh, distributors uh, as uh, we go. Um, as I said, no, you can always uh, connect with us uh, through our uh, web page. Let us know that uh, you have not found somebody in your area or in uh, the type of market uh, you work with, and uh, we will connect you with the relevant uh, distribution partner for the kind of opportunity you are working on. So another question came up uh, with respect to the mounting kit. Uh, sorry if that was not clear enough. Uh, we have a mounting kit uh, in the box. Actually, I'll take advantage of the question to talk about uh, all what we include in the box. So in the box, be it a base unit or a terminal unit, we obviously are going to have uh, the base unit or the terminal unit with their basic capacity out of uh, factory, 500 meg for the base unit, 100 meg for the terminal units. We are going to have uh, the mounting kit which is attached to the unit uh, already at factory. Uh, the two bands to secure the mounting kit to, to a pole are also there. And then the PoE unit itself, uh, which uh, will allow connecting the uh, unit back to the network or to the cameras or where, whatever it is and provide power at the same time. And last but not least, uh, very important to not forget 
uh, to a grounded unit, so we have a grounding cable uh, which is also part of the box. Okay, um, another question is uh, what do we lose uh, when we go from maybe two or three or four uh, units? Um, so we are, we are going to publish some information uh, in a few weeks on uh, what happens. As a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, the capacity is going to be in the range of 1.8 gigabit, but the terminal unit doesn't have more than a gig, so that would be the effective limitation. Uh, and we have seen already from uh, trials that we've done in the lab and with partners uh, in the field that when you go up to eight uh, units in the cluster, the capacity will go down to 1.2 gigabit shared across the signal. So there is a little bit of an impact when going from one to many, uh, that's the effectivity of the protocol. Uh, we hope uh, to make this a little better as uh, we make uh, the protocol more efficient, but that is uh, where we are today and we will publish some information in the next few weeks uh, related to all this. Another very important question, uh, what happens with interference uh, from uh, other equipment in the 60 gigahertz, uh, be it uh, maybe Etherhall uh, EH600 or uh, some, either, some third party um, equipment. Uh, so we, uh, again from the trials that we've done so far and uh, we, we were not surprised uh, there, uh, again all the millimeter wave uh, industry is working with very narrow beams. Uh, the propagation in the 60 gigahertz uh, is very uh, limited. Uh, you have seen here uh, 300 meters with multi-hall. Uh, in case somebody forgot, uh, we get to 800 meters with ether hall. So generally speaking, the effective range and the narrow beams uh, can be you know, our blessing in this case and are very good tools to ensure that there is no interference between different systems uh, from the same vendor or from different vendors in uh, the same area. So these are all the questions uh, that have come up my way. Uh, it seems that Alex uh, wanted to add uh, something here. So Alex, uh, I'm handing it over back to you. All right, thanks, uh, Shimon. Uh, yeah, I just want to add something uh, with regards to uh, availability of the products uh, to the security market. Uh, as, as you all know, um, Alex to Triad is, is our uh, kind of go-to distributor from a security point of view. Um, as Shimo said, we have other distributors as well in the U.S., um, you know, Wincom, Alliance, Connectronics, Tesco, and a few others, uh, but, you know, security integrators typically um, uh, don't have accounts with them, so we direct towards Annexter. Annexter currently uh, is not stocking this product, however, they do have access to the product through a, um, a third-party uh, distributor, um, basically, which is Wincom. Uh, so, so currently, at least initially, uh, that is the route that, um, that Annexa would, would source the product until they, they choose to stock the product, and we're also working with them on that, so we'll keep you informed. So Annexa will be selling the product, and they just won't be uh, um, uh, you know, procuring it directly because they're not stocking the product yet. I just wanted to let you know, so uh, Annexa will be selling the product. In fact, I'm just uh, expecting uh, an order uh, next day or so for uh, the first... Uh, multi-all system for a security application, which will be uh, going through Annex test. So I just kind of want to let you know that I know that that's, that's very, very important. Um, and actually, what, one question for you, Shimon. At what point in time, will, I don't know if you, you know if you can answer that question now, will we have stock availability of this product in the U.S.? Do you know uh, the situation on that? So, uh, yes, our uh, first deliveries are going out, uh, I mean, our second delivery, sorry, are going out uh, this week. Uh, so uh, sometime next week they will be in the US with our uh, major distributors 
and from there on it's basically available to everybody. Okay, so in terms of availability, so if, if uh, a, a, a system integrator wants to know availability of multi-hall um, uh, and they place an order today with Annex, then when, when can they expect delivery without come out of the second batch? Is that going to be um, in June or July or to be earlier than that? No, the, the second batch will hit uh, the shelves in the U.S. Um, I would say within two weeks. By the time uh, it, it is known, it ships uh, from uh, here to uh, the U.S. and is stocked properly, inventoried, etc. With uh, the major distributors, uh, you may know the process a little better than I do. But what I've uh, been led to understand is that uh, within two weeks, uh, deliveries will ripple down. Uh, from the major distributors uh, down the street. Okay, thank you. Uh, and will there be an e-learning uh, uh, module uh, available um, on the multi-hall? And um, just to let them know also uh, regarding uh, an ins installation video um, for multi-hall. At this point in time, we already have an installation video available. Uh, we are going to turn on the link uh, in a day or two. I've seen it myself. Uh, it's even better than the previous ones. Uh, and I enjoyed uh, the one on Etherhall a lot. I enjoyed uh, this one even more. Uh, so e-learning will come uh, a little later. Uh, but the installation video is already uh, ready. And as I said, we will turn on the link uh, very soon now. Do, do systems integrators need to be certified uh, Shimon to install this product or all they got to do is watch the video uh, and they can install the product? Um, well, they, they can only watch the Sorry, we had uh, a little bit of echo here. So, uh, multi-hall is actually very easy to install, and uh, you know, I think that it can be installed by somebody who has just a little bit of IT experience uh, and has experience with Etherhall. Uh, the GUI of multi-hall resembles a lot uh, the GUI of Etherhall. We have done that on purpose. Uh, the point-to-multipoint makes the installation process even simpler. Uh, so I would recommend to at least you know, try it once uh, in a garage or uh, anywhere before trying to put it on a pole in front of the customer. But over, other than that, it's uh, very simple to deploy. Okay, thank, thanks, Shimon. Uh, I just want to add something on the... Uh on the pricing, so thank you for sharing the MSRP pricing. Um, we will um, share the uh, the multi-hole price list uh, with with everyone uh, very shortly. Uh, I'll ask Martin to send that out to uh, to uh, everyone on, on the call, uh, in fact, the, the whole red group, uh, and also uh, explain the discount levels. The discount levels on uh, multi-hole are slight different from the discount levels on Etherhall. Um, so if, if a customer, for example, was you know getting a, let's say a 30% discount on on, on the Ethol products, does mean that they to say they'll get a 30% on uh, on multi hall The actual discount levels will be slightly lower. That's because the MSRP is lower. Uh, but we will explain what that is um, the next day or so uh, with an email and also email the uh, the multi hall price list. If if that's okay, um, uh, share if we can do that. Of course, we will. Great. So uh, thank you very much, Alex and Shimon, for your great review. And uh, guys, if you have any more questions after the webinar, uh, just don't hesitate and get in touch with us. And uh, we will send you the recording, presentation, and pricing uh, the days to come in case you missed anything. And uh, we'd really like to thank everyone who joined us this morning, and of course, Shimon and Alex, for your great reviews. I look forward to seeing you all in our uh, upcoming security webinars. And uh, Thank you again. Have a great day.